Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips. So today I got a really cool episode for you. I want to show you my methods for creating lip sync with dialogue when doing animation. It's kind of a cool technique that I've picked up over the years. The funny thing about doing dialogue is that you can talk to 10 different animators and you'll have 10 different opinions on how to do it. This is something that I've kind of picked up from other animators over the years. And um, it's my technique for getting good lip sync. But, before, but first, uh, before all that, I just want to remind you, if you like what you see, if you like my channel, please subscribe to it. I'm trying to build up a following. I want to tell the world all the you know experiences and the art tips and everything that I've got. And, um, and also, I want to talk a little bit about my hardware uh, and my software that I'm using for today. You know, I always talk about Wacom and their Cintiqs. I'm, today, I'm working on a 22-inch Cintiq. I really love them. Go check out their website. It's wacom.com, W-A-C-O-M.com. And then also the software that I'm going to be using today for the animation is TV Paint. It's something that I picked up oh, about a year ago that I started using. I really dig it. Um, I'm a traditional animator. I come from you know drawing on paper and that sort of thing. And for me, it's the closest thing that I've been able to find where I'm working paperless, where I'm working digitally, but it still has that feeling like I'm working on paper, you know, animation. And also, if you want to see more of my work, more of my tutorials, that sort of thing, please check out my website. It's creatureartteacher.com. It's the art of Aaron Blaze. It's creatureartteacher.com. So let's get into this. So um, last week, I created a little just snippet of animation. I'm calling it and uh, random animation with Aaron Blaze. That's what I'm doing. And so every once in a while, I just, you know, I get bored and I got to animate something. And so last week, I just recorded myself saying something really random. And I dropped the dialogue into TV Paint and I threw in this little character and had some fun with it. It took about a day and a half to animate and, and I had some fun. Well, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and play this first, and then we'll talk about it. So here we got this little guy. He walks in. I, I don't have any shoes. It's just my feet. <laughs> and then he walks out. Very simple, very bizarre. Uh, quick animation. I'll let it play one more time. I, I don't have any shoes. It's just my feet. Okay. So now I'm going to drag this, drag this back so you can see. And now one of the things I do to get uh, lip sync, forget the mouth shapes for right now, but I lead the dialogue. This is something that animators will debate over and over again. Some There's a camp that says, you know, you should animate right on the sound. And there's another camp that says you should animate ahead of it and that sort of thing. Well, I believe that we do need to animate ahead of the sound. As we talk, like I'm talking to you right now, we tend to make the mouth shapes before we make the sound. And so a lot of times when you see animation that's animated right on the sound, it starts to feel late because we as humans are used to seeing people talk and making their mouth shapes before they actually make the sound. And so when you shift that in animation, it starts feeling weird and it feels like the dialogue is off. So what I do is I go in and I tend to, like in normal conversation, the way this character is talking now, I'll animate those mouth shapes all oh, about two, maybe sometimes four frames ahead. And then if he's going to say a phrase, I'll anticipate that by sometimes 16 or 24 frames. If you watch, watch when he's walking forward. You see he starts to open his mouth and getting ready to talk. He's doing that about... Oh, about 16, 24 frames before he actually starts to talk. And if I scrub through here, you're going to see he says that opens his mouth for I long before he says it. All right. And then the, the, for the, the O shapes for don't. See, he's already got the O shape, but he hasn't said it yet. And then here he's saying have. 
See, he's getting into the, the ha and the V before he even says it. That's because we are we we hear it before we see it, okay? I'm sorry, it's the other way around. We see it before we hear it. Okay? And that's and that's how we get sync in our in our brains. The other thing I want to talk about in here is I want you to see how I don't hit every single mouth shape when he talks. We don't talk like I'm talking to you right now. You have to, when you're listening to dialogue, you got to hear how we move through mouth shapes. You have to say it to yourself over and over again and try to say it as naturally as you can, as closely as the character that you're animating is saying it and feel how those mouth shapes actually slide into one another and you're really just hitting accents here and there and most words you're kind of move through. One of the things I talk to people about is some of the best dialogue you can see as far as lip sync goes. Watch the Muppets. And they're just puppets that move their mouths open you know, and closed. There's no mouth shapes other than open and closed, but they know how to hit the accents. And when you can hit those accents and you hit them enough ahead, like I'm doing here, two to four frames, then your lip sync, you're, you're almost there. The rest of it is far, as far as uh, finding those, the details, the, the mouth shapes specific to certain sounds, that's where you put the icing on the cake. And so if I run through this, I don't have any shoes. You can see I've really only got about four mouth shapes in there that I'm hitting. Okay. So he's hitting that F, but it's just my feet. And you see how I move through those mouth shapes? It's just my... See how simple those mouth shapes are? I'm just hitting those accents. And I'm hitting everything about two to four frames ahead. And that will give you good dialogue. Let me play this again. I don't have any shoes. It's just my feet. You see that? So when it plays at speed, it actually looks right. Everything is hitting several frames ahead, but you're making it like, like I said, a natural. I don't have any shoes. A natural speed. It's just my feet. We actually make those mouth shapes ahead of the actual sound. And the bigger you get with it, you see what I just did? And the bigger, I made that B shape probably eight frames before I actually said it, maybe even it's 16 frames feet. before I actually said it. So the bigger, broader the dialogue, the more you can lead those mouth shapes, okay? So take that with you. And uh, if you're an animator, go out and give it a shot. Remember, if you like what you see here, subscribe to my channel and go out and do some dialogue. I hope this helps. I know dialogue can be kind of hard sometimes, but remember, keep your dialogue mouth shape simple. Really feel how you're saying something and lead the dialogue by a couple of frames. All right, so until next week, I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.